and known to me until after Father's passing. Father had prepared two witnesses for this time. This people has heard from one, my brother Isaac. I now call upon one of Father's wives, Mother Naomi, to give her full testimony, inspired of heaven. <clears throat> May the Lord strengthen her. May the humble receive through the spirit of truth, the testimony of truth. And may the unbelief of the ungodly be held at bay at this time. But the honest in heart will receive truth. I pray for Heavenly Father's Spirit to be upon me. And for our prophet Uncle Rulin to be near. He knows what he wants me to say. And I pray that he will speak through me. For of myself I am nothing. And I need him to guide me. I first will ask a question to myself and to all of you. Do we really believe in Uncle Ruin? And we all can answer, yes, we believe. But do we really believe? Because if we do, we believe that Warren Jeffs is the prophet of God at this time. I was sealed to Uncle Ruben nine years ago. And he has blessed my life so abundantly. I often have asked myself, who am I to be so blessed? I feel like the most unworthy person. Yet I feel so grateful that the Lord saw fit to put me in his home be guided by him for I love him with all of my heart and I pray to live my life worthy that I may see him again soon after I was married I was sitting in Father's room one day, one evening. Uncle Warren called him on the phone to report something to him. This was about two months after I was married. I was married in 1993. After he got off the phone, he looked at me and said, That man is a perfect priesthood man, and one day he will take my place. I did not know what he meant at that time. I, 
I never questioned. I always, in my heart, knew that Father would be renewed. And though it's a little differently than I thought it would be, I know he is being renewed. Many times since that time he has said things to me. He has turned me to Warren. And often I wondered why he he did that. I didn't feel to question really. I just wondered. But now I know why he did. He was preparing me as he has prepared all of his family for the step we have taken, the step that he wanted us to take after he passed on. And I am so grateful to be sealed to Warren for time. I know it is Father's will. Before he passed away, he told me that he wanted me to go to Warren if anything happened to him. And I am so grateful to be the wife of our holy prophet and to be connected to priesthood. About a month before our father passed away, I was with him in his office, just he and I. And he was waiting for Warren to come and talk to him, as he usually did every day. All of a sudden, I felt his eyes on me, so I looked up at him. And he said, where's Warren? And I says, I think he's coming. I, I think he's on his way. And he just looked at me for a long time. And he said, Warren will be my successor. And I said, Father, what, what do you mean? You're going to be here, aren't you? And he said, I'm going on a journey. Warren will be my successor. He will take my place. I didn't feel to question the way he said it was so powerful I I knew I didn't really understand I when he said things like that to me I I knew he was he knew what he was saying and I didn't question him I always put things like that aside I didn't understand fully I knew he only did what the Lord told him to do. Warren came in the room and he says, I've been waiting for you, come in. And I was, as I was getting up to leave, he pulled me down to him and said, you remember what I told you. And he told me many times before and after his stroke that I would be called as a witness for him and to remember the things that he told me. Many things that he told me I would, they're so sacred I could never reveal them. But I pray that 
I will say what he wants me to say. On Grandmother Olive's fun funeral, Father was at the breakfast table that morning, and we were going to sing on the funeral. I went up to shake his hand and tell him thank you and ask him if I could go to practice. And he took my hand and just held it for a, a minute and he pulled me down to him. And I said, thank you. Is it okay if I go to practice? <coughs> and he said, yes, go and represent me well. And I said, I pray to be a good representation of you. And then he pulled me closer and said, you stay close. I need you. And I said, Father, I need you. And he said, I won't always, I won't be here much longer. I am going away for a while, but I'll be close. I knew he was trying to tell me something. I started to walk out of the room and I stopped at the door and looked back and he was looking at me. He smiled and he waved. And I just thought to myself, what is he trying to tell me? On the 6th of September, he was going to go for the day. He was at the breakfast table again. And I went to tell him thank you and I said, goodbye, Father. We'll be anxiously awaiting your return. And he said, I won't be back for a while. And as I went down to my room, I, I realized he was really trying to tell me something. And I prayed that I wouldn't be asleep at the switch. The next day, as I woke up that morning, I, I felt very anxious to pray for Father that day. I had a feeling that something was about to happen. At the breakfast table, I asked him if I could come and talk to him in his room. And he said, Yes, sweetheart, come and see me one last time. He usually didn't get done eating until about nine o'clock. And that day he went out on the deck before he went back to his room. And he kept saying, I'm sad for my son. And at the time, I wondered what he meant, who he was talking of. And knowing that he could see far beyond what any of us could see, I realize now who he was talking of. Knowing what we are going to go through, he knowing what we are going to go through, and he knowing the great weight that was going to be put upon Warren. But all through that day, 
I just had a very anxious feeling. When I went in to see him, I asked him what he meant when he said one last time. And he just looked at me and smiled and said, be at peace, just be at peace. He went on a drive that day and when he came home, I was in the kitchen and as he came through the kitchen, I could see he was very sick. He had been throwing up and again, I just had a foreboding that something was going to happen. And I went to my room for a little while and prayed that I would be at peace as he told me to be. And I went back up and just stood by his room. I could hear him in there coughing and I went into his office and the sliding door to his bedroom was open. I stood there for a little while. Mother Mary was in there and Mother Asina and Warren was in his office. I went back to my room because I started feeling sick. And I asked the Lord to put his pain on me that he wouldn't have to suffer. I felt quite sick for a little while, started feeling better and went back up the stairs and saw Warren standing in the hall. And the way he looked, his countenance shone. Father's light shone in him. And I the feeling I had looking at him was the same feeling I had when I looked at Father. The majesty of his priesthood and the brilliance of his countenance lit a fire in me that it, it was like a overpowering surge going through my body. As the night went on, Father didn't come to dinner. He stayed in his room. We were told to all pray fervently for him. And before he went to bed, he called all of us to his room to sing to him. And as we were singing, I know all of us felt the heavenly beings that were there. And as I looked at Father, he was so glorious to look at. Though he was so sick and so in so much pain, he made sure that every one of us knew that he loved us.
And he said, I wish I could kiss you all, but I'm too weak. So I was going to bed that night. I, I started to feel sick again. That foreboding feeling came on me again. That anxiousness to pray for him. And yet to be at peace. About 10.30 I went upstairs. Asked Mary how he was doing. She said he was doing a little better but was still sick I went back to my room and read for a while I didn't really sleep that night. About one o'clock in the morning, Warren paged and said that they were going to take him to the hospital. I went up and watched them leave. And through the night, Warren would called from the hospital and just kept us updated on his condition. About five o'clock in the morning, I was reading out of the history of priesthood succession and I was reading Father's Patriarchal Blessing and it says in there at the beginning of the millennium you will be caught up in the clouds of heaven to meet the Savior and that That hit me different than I ever had before. I wondered what it exactly what it meant. It seemed different than how I had understood it before. And about that time, Warren paged and told us to pray fervently for Father. Through that day, he would keep us updated, telling us his condition. And about 2.30, he called and told us to go to our rooms and offer a kneel-down prayer for Father. I was in the living room. We were watching meeting at home. I went to my room and as I knelt down to pray I could feel Father. I could feel his presence there and he said, Naomi, remember what I told you? Are you going to accept it? Will you accept what I told you? I have been preparing you for this. Will you accept it? And is all I could say is, yes, Father. I love your will in my life. I am here to do your will. Whatever it takes, I will accept. No matter what I have to go through. And such a sweet, peaceful feeling came over me. But when the call came of Father's passing, I could only rejoice. I knew he was free of pain. And that he wouldn't have to suffer anymore and that the beginning of his renewal was here. At that time, he said, 
Now you know where to look. Look to Warren. He will lead this people now. And he will bring you back to me. Warren was still down to the hospital. I just had an anxiousness. I couldn't wait for him to come home. And I was standing outside about six o'clock and Uncle Wendell's car came driving up and as Warren climbed out of the car that same overpowering surge went through my body the brilliance of his countenance and the majesty of his priesthood shone as a fire on in his eyes and in his face. And Father said again, this is the man I want you to follow. Go to him. He will bring you back to me. And at that time I remembered what Father had told me before he passed. He wanted me to go to Warren if anything happened to him. I feel to rejoice in his will. I am so grateful for him. A couple of days after his passing, when they brought Father's body home, we were waiting to go in to see, it, see him. We were standing in the hall. Warren said, I followed the prophet home today. And as I looked up at him, I could see Father standing there. I could see that Warren looked just like him. And again he said, this is the man I want you to follow. This is the man who will take my place. Follow him. And doesn't it just feel good to know that? Doesn't it just feel good to know where to look? We need not look anywhere else. The prophet always appoints the man who is going to succeed him. And I can bear testimony that Father kept Warren close to him for a reason, for this reason. He is the prophet. He is the one that Father left here for us to follow. And he goes forward with the courage of heaven. I know he does right. I know that he will do nothing except it is the Lord's will. I know that Father is close, guiding him, and that he is here today. I am so grateful for this testimony. I am so grateful for the power of priesthood in my life. My only desire is to be ready for whatever the Lord requires of me. And I know the way I will be ready is to be perfectly and sweetly obedient to my husband and to the priesthood in my life. 
I am nothing without him. And I can become nothing unless I follow in perfect submission to every direction that I am asked to do, to whatever job I am given. I know the Lord knows what we will go through, and he will never put us through anything that isn't for our good. May we as a people be a strength to our prophet. May we step up to the mark. And may we, through our faith and through the love of one another, bring down the protection of heaven upon us as we go through the scenes ahead, the judgments of God that are soon to be poured, poured out upon this people and upon this nation. Oh, may we be worthy to be caught up and go with our prophet to the redemption of Zion. This is my prayer for me and for all of you. And I say it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're life on the farm. To speak for fathers, ladies, I call on Mother Mary, father's nurse and caretaker, who stayed with him day and night for these last few years. We'll hear her testimony of our prophet. I pray for the Spirit of God to be with me, that I may do the will of my dear husband. And pray for your interest and your faith and prayers on my behalf. Father told me I would be talking to thee. As I was preparing my mind for this, I wondered what I would, what I could say to the people to place in their hearts the same spirit and feeling he has placed in his family and in the brethren around him. So with this in mind, I ask the Lord to bless me in this assignment. As Uncle Alvin was talking, relaying that experience, where Father gave him a blessing. I'll never forget after he left the room and we went in to care for Father, how drained he was. He said, I gave everything I had to that man for the gift of life, that he would be healed. He says, I don't even feel like I could make it to lunch. That's the kind of a person our prophet was and is. I saw him time after time give everything he had to bless somebody in distress or a problem that had come up many times when he and Warren were meeting as they did every morning going over the priesthood issues. Many times after these meetings, he would say, I have exerted, exerted all I have that the Lord would give us the right answer in this situation. And many times he would say, I don't feel like I can even eat. In Father's last few years, we he started asking us to take him on drives, 
to help relieve the pressures that he was feeling, help take away the stress, and give his body a break. Many times on these drives, we experience the hand of the Lord in protecting him from accident and harm. He enjoyed going to see the mountains. Something about the mountains, he really noticed and he enjoyed Zion's particularly. But there was hardly a trip to Zion's, but what he would say, very soon the judgments will be here. How many of our people will be able to be saved? How many of our people are going to hold the focus long enough to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God to be able to withstand the judgments? One particular time he said, Oh, there are so many half-hearted people. He always yearned for the people above his very own welfare. One time in Canada, one of our last trips up there, Father acted like he was going into a stroke. He went semi-unconscious. I ran out of the room and asked Warren to come in. He said, I think Father is having a stroke. He's just not responding to us well, Uncle Wendell and I and Warren were in there. We tried to get his attention, and he acted like he really wasn't there completely. Warren immediately called to get the plane back, to get Father back to Salt Lake, get him back to a hospital where we could help him better. Just as we were in that process of doing so, Father came to very alert and very sharp. And he said, isn't it time to be at meeting? Warren let him know what had happened and he had looked like he was having a stroke. Father said, let's go to meeting. And I'll never forget the power in those words. It's almost as though he had just visited with celestial beings. And they had instructed him what to do. So Warren, as he always does and always has, said, yes, sir, and out the door we went. Me and my nursing ways were still trying to ponder on it all, wondering if this was going to work out okay, but knowing the power in Father's words, I quickly followed. <laughs> he went through meeting with no difficulty, came back on the airplane with no difficulty, he seemed as strong and bright as ever once he got home. This is one little incident. There's been so many where there has been no doubt that what Father has been in charge and in control of the affairs of this people. The Lord is willing will open my mind. The last few weeks before Father left, 
though he hasn't really left. Father has been dropping, you might say, little hints and clues to us of his passing and what would follow. The training, the beautiful training we've been given. But Father would go into the millennium, would usually make us want to kind of drop these little clues and set them aside and just wonder if Father was tired perhaps when he said them. But to Isaac and I in his room, he said, just within the last two weeks, Warren will carry this people when I go. Uncle Fred will be at his side. Isaac and I quickly said, Father, you're going to be here forever. What are you what are you saying? As he has done no other time he said, Warren will carry this people when I go. At this Isaac and I backed off a little. He has said this kind of a thing before to us here and there, but this time seemed a little different and both of us felt absent for words. At that I heard Isaac say, yes sir. Well, there's many, many things I would love to share with all of you when it comes to Father. So many faith-promoting experiences I've witnessed over these last just about four years being at his side. It would be wonderful to just take a couple hours and go through just a tiny piece of them, but I don't want to take all of your time. I want to tell everyone, though, doubt not, fear not, where the prophet places his confidence, we want to put ours there also. We know that is the way we can make it to being lifted up. So many times Father would look at us ladies in class and say, smile. That's how I know you love me. That's how I know you are filled with the Holy Ghost. A smile within. It's a beautiful gift. I pray to do better at. I'm so grateful to be part of him. So grateful for the leadership he left over us. The Lord never leaves his people uncared for. I'm so grateful for this, grateful for this experience. And I pray for each and every one of you, you'll have the strength to withstand the future coming upon us. For great is the work for those who are faithful unto the end, which I pray I may do. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.